When you think of metamorphic rocks, the first thing you might think of is the word metamorphosis, which means to change, right? We all know that a caterpillar goes through a metamorphosis and turns into a butterfly, becomes something different. Well, metamorphic rocks are rocks that are changed and become different rocks. If we look at the reference table, we can see that if we start with a sedimentary rock and we expose it to heat and pressure or heat or pressure, it turns into a new rock, a new metamorphic rock. The same thing is true with igneous rocks. If they are buried underground and exposed to large amounts of heat or pressure, they also become a new metamorphic rock. And even a metamorphic rock, if it gets buried underground deeper where there's more heat or pressure, even that will turn into a new metamorphic rock. So metamorphic rocks are formed when existing rocks are changed by great amounts of heat or pressure. And it's important to understand that any kind of rock can become metamorphic. So sedimentary, igneous, or metamorphic, they can all change into a new metamorphic rock. There are two processes that would make a rock become a metamorphic rock. We'll go through both of those. The first process is called regional metamorphism. When we think of a region like the Northeast region of the United States, we're talking about a large area. Regional metamorphism takes place over large areas where the rocks in those places are put under intense heat and pressure. This mainly happens at plate boundaries where two plates are converging or colliding, like in this top picture here. You can see that by the two arrows, the two plates are coming together, and when they collide, there's going to be a lot of pressure put on those rocks. Now, you'll also notice that there are mountains there, because when plates collide, it often creates mountains. So mountain ranges are areas where we expect to see regional metamorphism. Let's take a look at a video that's going to show the process of two plates converging. Notice over here the rocks on the left for now are pretty horizontal, pretty flat. But as the plates continue to collide, the rocks get all buckled and folded and all distorted. That pressure from that impact is enough that it made those rocks become metamorphic rocks. So again, you have pressure from two plates colliding. If we look at our metamorphic rock chart, we'll see the word regional in a couple of places. All of the rocks on the top part of the chart are created by regional metamorphism, by intense heat and pressure. There are also a few rocks on the bottom part of the chart that are also created by regional metamorphism. Let's focus on the top for now. If we look at the chart, it shows us that if we start off with the sedimentary rock shale, if that rock gets buried underground a little bit and there is low grade metamorphism, that means just a little bit of heat and a little bit of pressure, that shale turns into a rock called slate. If the slate gets buried deeper down, it turns into a rock called phyllite. If the phyllite gets buried deeper, it becomes schist. If the schist gets buried even deeper, where there is high grade metamorphism, it creates a rock called gneiss. So if we look at this whole scheme, starting with the slate, as we go down the chart, there is more and more heat and pressure being added to the rocks. Let's take a look at what those rocks look like. So on the top left, there is a piece of slate. So this was shale, which is a sedimentary rock. This was shale that got buried underground and there was low grade metamorphism. So just a little bit of heat and pressure. With more heat and pressure, this rock would turn into phyllite. Now, when you look at phyllite, overall, it looks very shiny, very iridescent. And if you look at the reference table, it tells you that there are shiny surfaces from microscopic mica crystals. So we can't see the crystals because they are microscopic. 
and overall the rock has a very shimmery kind of surface. If there's even more heat and pressure, the rock becomes schist. In schist, we're going to be able to see the mica crystals. They are visible. So if you remember what mica looks like, if you think about the muscovite mica or the biotite mica that we looked at when we studied minerals, they are very flat, very, very shiny minerals. In schist, you can see crystals of mica. And if there's high-grade metamorphism, if there's a lot of heat and a lot of pressure, what happens is the minerals become aligned into bands. So if you look at a piece of gneiss, you'll actually see bands or stripes of white minerals, black minerals, white minerals, black minerals, very much looking like a zebra. So those are all the rocks on the top part of our chart. There are other rocks that can become metamorphic rocks because of regional metamorphism. And another example is granite. So granite, if you remember, is an igneous rock. It's intrusive. It forms underground from magma. And we can see in here we have all these crystals that are scattered all over the place. If a rock like granite is put under a lot of heat and pressure, it becomes nice. So in granite, the crystals were all scattered. In the gneiss, the crystals are arranged in bands. Another metamorphic rock is marble, which comes from limestone. So we remember limestone is sedimentary. We can see uh, shell fragments and, and pieces of dead organisms in there. If that's put under a lot of heat and pressure, it turns into the marble that we find statues are made out of, and a lot of people have marble in their bathrooms. Some people have marble floors in their houses. Marble is basically limestone that was put under a lot of heat and pressure. Another example would be sandstone, which again is sedimentary, made of sand. If that sand is put under great amounts of heat and pressure, it becomes quartzite. Same thing with the conglomerate. When conglomerates are put under heat and pressure, the large fragments in them are basically squished or flattened and they become these oval shapes and the new rock is called a meta conglomerate and we can see these stretched flattened pebbles or cobbles inside the rock so again the rocks we looked at we looked at slate phyllite schist we looked at gneiss and we just saw quartzite, marble, and metaconglomerate. So those rocks are all created by regional metamorphism. Now the other process that can create metamorphic rocks is called contact metamorphism. And on the reference table, we see the word heat over there. Contact metamorphism happens when molten rock, so we're talking about magma or lava, when molten rock comes in contact with other rocks, the heat from the molten rock changes the rock and it makes the minerals change. It's important to remember with contact metamorphism that even though there's magma or lava and even though there's heat, melting does not occur because if the rock melts, then it would solidify and become an igneous rock. So for metamorphic rocks, we cannot have melting. Okay? So we have a lot of heat, but no melting. So this diagram shows a few places where this process could be happening. So we have two plates colliding. We have an oceanic plate colliding with a continental plate. And the oceanic plate is subducting. It's getting pushed down. As it rubs against the continental plate, there's going to be a lot of friction, and friction creates heat. So all along this area, there's heat that could create metamorphic rocks. When the plate gets pushed down really far, it starts to melt into magma. So all along this magma, there are going to be zones of contact metamorphism. Okay? And when the magma starts rising, all around the, the rising magma, we're going to see contact metamorphism. It's caused by the heat. 
the heat from the magma. So all of these places, we're going to see contact metamorphism. Here's another diagram showing the same process. So we have this magma chamber underground, very hot magma. And in this pinkish area, they're showing contact metamorphism. So let's suppose that this gray layer here was limestone, okay, this whole layer. When the magma burns up, the heat in this area and this area, it's so hot that that limestone is going to change into marble, into the metamorphic rock marble. So we know that one of our goals is to be able to identify rocks. If you're trying to identify a metamorphic rock, there are four things you're going to look for. There are four changes that happen during metamorphism. The first one is that the density goes up, right? These rocks are under pressure, and we know when there's more pressure, the density is greater. The second change that happens is something called foliation. Foliation means that the minerals are aligned. They're lined up with each other. There are two types of foliation. The first type is what we call platy layers or thin flat sheets. If you look at the slate in this picture, it basically looks like these plates or these flat sheets of slate that are piled on top of each other. So that's one kind of foliation. The minerals are aligned. The other kind is what we saw with the gneiss, and that is called banding, where there are these alternating layers of light minerals, dark minerals, light minerals, dark minerals. So both of these are foliation. The minerals are lined up in one of two ways. If we go back to the reference table and you look at the texture column, all of the rocks on the top part of the chart, they are all foliated. So their minerals are all aligned. The top three rocks have the mineral alignment. So that would be the thin platy layers, the flat sheets. The gneiss is the only rock on the reference table that has banding. The third change is that metamorphic rocks usually have a high percentage of mica. So that, again, the biotite mica, the muscovite mica, flat sheets, very shiny. And if we look again at those foliated rocks on the top of the chart, all of them have mica in them. In the phyllite, we have the microscopic mica. In the schist, the mica is visible. And in the gneiss, the black bands are mica. The last change that we see in metamorphic rocks has to do with the pressure. So it's common to see folded or wavy or distorted layers. And you can see those in all the pictures there. When you're driving around Westchester, if you look at the rocks on the side of the road, you'll often see these wavy bands. That tells you that the rocks were under a lot of pressure, and so they are metamorphic rocks. Sometimes if there's really a lot of pressure, we have intense distortion, like these layers that you see here are very, very wavy. This picture was taken close to Rybrook, and we can see a little bit of distortion, a little bit of waviness. So tomorrow we're going to take a look at some metamorphic rocks. We'll get to explore them a bit and learn a little bit more about how they form.